Hey, it's John. Welcome back to my channel. Now, even though this channel is all about trains, I'm starting a project that is really only loosely related to trains, but is nevertheless interesting to me and I hope will be interesting to you too. So as you probably saw in the video title, this will be an introduction to a freeway construction project that will start in my hometown of Lincoln, Nebraska next year in 2020. The interstate highway system has permanently altered how America looks and travels, but the vast majority of the system was constructed before I was even born. And even though this project will not be a part of the interstate highway system, it's going to be exciting to watch a greenfield freeway project be built from the ground up. This video will be an introduction to the project, what it is, when it's going to be built, the impacts this project will have on nearby residents and the environment, and how it's going to be paid for. Now as a quick disclaimer, I'm not in any way affiliated with the project, I'm just a casual observer. I've not had any formal engineering or economics education. So take everything in this video with a grain of salt. But that being said, I've made every attempt to ensure accuracy in this video. And I will provide links in the video description box for you to do further investigation on your own. But for now, let's get into it. The Lincoln South Beltway is a project that has been a very long time coming. It was originally proposed in the 1960s as the interstate highway system was being planned and constructed. But due to the cost of the project, it was often talked about. But the project remained an idea until more funding was made available. Same is true for a future planned East Beltway, but there are currently no funds available for that project. The Lincoln South Beltway is the largest project that the Nebraska Department of Transportation has undertaken. And while there have been much larger highway construction projects in the state, most notably at Omaha, this project is being almost entirely funded and managed by the state without much federal involvement. Now the main purpose of this project is to divert traffic along Nebraska Highway 2 around the city of Lincoln. The eastern portion of Highway 2 runs between Highway 77 in the west and the Iowa State Line at Nebraska City. Once in Iowa, the highway continues a few miles to Interstate 29. Incidentally, this section of Highway 2 was heavily damaged by Missouri River flooding in March and April of 2019 and is currently being completely rebuilt. Highway 2 serves as a major time-saving link between I-29 and I-80, eliminating the need to go north through Council Bluffs and Omaha. Highway 2 is widened to a four-lane divided highway between Nebraska City and Lincoln in the 1990s to accommodate increased traffic from I-29. Once traffic reaches the city of Lincoln, however, it conflicts with local traffic. And while Lincoln is a city of fewer than 300,000 people, there's a lack of high-capacity cross-town arterial roads, and moving across Lincoln can be tedious, particularly during rush hour. Traffic along Highway 2 in Lincoln is also constrained by no fewer than 15 traffic signals. This means that a journey from 120th Street, which is the future starting place of the South Beltway, to Highway 77, a journey of only 11 miles, took 20 minutes. The same journey for a truck in rush hour can easily take over 30 minutes. Now, it must be noted that upgrading Highway 77 to freeway standards from the junction of the South Beltway to Van Dorn Street was originally planned, but as a cost-saving measure, it was decided to do that work at a future date. This means the traffic from the Beltway to I-80 would still be constrained by three stoplights, but the trip will still be faster and safer than traveling Highway 2 on its current alignment. The Lincoln South Beltway will start at 120th Street in the east and run to the intersection of Highway 77 in the west. The interchange with Highway 77 is going to be quite substantial, with many retaining walls and bridges. The entire project is estimated to cost about $300 million. It will be built to freeway standards and contain five interchanges along its 11-mile alignment. It will also cross three roads which will have no access to the Beltway. Despite the Beltway's relatively short length, it will dramatically alter the landscape, traffic patterns, and future development of South Lincoln and the surrounding area. The western half of the Beltway is lower in elevation than the eastern half, and because of this, an enormous amount of regrading of the land is going to be required to achieve a suitable alignment for the Beltway. In a technical report included with the Environmental Impact Study completed in May of 2017, noted that the development of the area surrounding the Beltway between 38th Street and 56th Street was likely to occur by 2040. East of 56th Street, however, because of the increase in elevation, city water infrastructure would be unable to use the existing gravity-fed system, and until this problem was addressed, development was unlikely to occur. The 2011 passage of the Build Nebraska Act, which directs a quarter-cent sales tax to completing Nebraska's expressway system, brought renewed focus on completing the Beltway. Until this year, the construction of the Beltway was anticipated to take seven to eight years to complete. In February of 2019, however, Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts announced a plan to reduce the construction timeline to three years by using an innovative funding mechanism to establish a delayed payment schedule. This will allow the state to maintain the original payment timeline. A build finance plan was approved by the Nebraska legislature in April 2019, and since then, the project has been moving at a very quick pace. 
Right away acquisition began in the spring of 2019, and as of November 13th, 164 of the necessary 187 contracts were complete, with the remainder expected to be finalized by December 1st, 2019. Bidding on the project will commence on December 12th, with NDOT picking a contractor within 30 days. Financial closing on the terms of the contractor's loan is expected to occur no later than March 31st, 2020, and a notice to proceed is expected to be given by NDOT on April 1st, 2020. The Beltway is scheduled to be substantially complete in three years, or 1,095 days from the date of the notice to proceed being issued. The Nebraska DOT has outlined strict requirements for what work must be finished by that time. The whole of the Beltway and Highway 77 must be open to traffic after three years. The main projects that are not required to be completed after three years are the overcrossings of 38th Street and 82nd Street. In a pre-bid meeting with contractors, NDOT emphasized that the bridge structures over the Beltway must be complete, but they did not have to be open to the public. It remains unclear, however, if the interchanges at the two intersections are to be open to the public by the end of three years. Regardless, the entire project must be completed after four years. Most of the state of Nebraska is laid out with county roads and highways located every mile on a grid. In most of the U.S., north-south county roads were platted to align with longitudinal lines. To account for the curvature of the earth, every 24 miles, these north-south roads must be shifted to maintain longitudinal alignment. One such correction point lies just north of the future beltway. Roads south of Saltilla Road are shifted two city blocks west of the roads north of Saltilla Road, resulting in six disconnected county roads. Construction of the beltway will link two of these roads together by shifting the alignment of the roads south of Saltilla Road to the east. Three of the roads will not be aligned, and one road, 27th Street, will be realigned to join the adjacent correction road, 38th Street. Acreages surround the intersection of 56th Street and Saltilla Road, and therefore the road will not be realigned. This will permanently slow traffic on a road that is quite busy in the city of Lincoln. The process of constructing the beltway is going to be fairly disrupted to the surrounding area. NDOT has mandated that for each closure of one north-south arterial road, both adjacent arterials must remain open. In this example, 68th Street is closed, therefore 54th and 82nd Streets will remain open. The majority of the alignment passes through farmland, however three homes and three businesses will have to be relocated as part of the project. Despite the idea of the Beltway developing since the 1960s, the alignment wasn't finalized until the environmental impact study was completed in 2002. As with all infrastructure projects that cause displacement, opposition from residents is likely to arise. There has not been too much public opposition to the project, however. At the final public meeting of the project, some people questioned whether the project should be built further south of Lincoln. The state responded that building the beltway close to the city was important to ensure that truck traffic was diverted from Highway 2 in Lincoln. Despite the lack of significant public opposition to the project, there are 17 tracts of land that the state has had to pursue condemnation hearings on. One of the most visible changes to the area will be along Saltilla Road, which is just north of the future beltway and serves as a de facto beltway for locals accessing Highway 77. As development has boomed south of Lincoln, traffic along Saltilla Road has increased, resulting in several injury accidents over the past two decades. To help with this problem, five roundabouts will be constructed at the intersections where arterial roadways are realigned. Several small acreages and farms are located along the corridor, as well as the communities of Hickman and Roca to the south, which rely on the city of Lincoln for employment and commercial opportunities. The Beltway is going to open up development of these areas as the city of Lincoln continues to grow, by shortening commute times to employment centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and beyond. It will also reduce congestion along the current alignment of Highway 2 in Lincoln and provide an important link for commercial traffic flowing across the state in Nebraska. The interchange of US 77 and the Beltway is adjacent to Wilderness Park, which is an area of forest that the city of Lincoln wants to preserve and expand as part of a future green beltway. The conservation easements to the south of the park will expand the footprint of this protected area, as well as the creation of a wetland area adjacent to the new beltway. Wetland mitigation is required by the contractor to offset the loss of wetland areas where the beltway will cross the Salt Creek. This work must start concurrent with the process of filling in existing wetland areas, and it must also be completed by April 1, 2021. Tree removal along the right-of-way, mostly located around the Salt Creek area, has already begun, and it must be completed by April 1, 2020 to comply with the Federal Migratory Bird Treaty Act. 
and other pre-construction activities that are currently underway involve relocating utilities and will be substantially complete by the time construction begins in spring of 2020. There are 15 utility firms that are going to be affected by this project. The utilities include electricity, water, wastewater, fiber, natural gas, and petroleum pipelines. Utility relocations are being handled by the individual organizations that control them and are not included in the Beltway's construction contract. I'll leave you a link in the description to a detailed explanation of all the utility relocation contracts if you're interested. The Beltway is estimated to cost around $300 million to construct. Once the final bid is announced in early 2020, the cost might rise, but as it stands, the state of Nebraska is funding 80% and the city of Lincoln will contribute the remaining 20%. In July of 2018, it was announced that Nebraska had received a $25 million grant from the Transportation Investment Generating Economic Recovery, or TIGER Fund, to help offset the cost. Now, I'm going to go into a bit of detail about how this project is going to be financed by the contractor because it is a somewhat special mechanism that has not been used before in the state of Nebraska. In April 2019, the Nebraska Unicameral passed LB 616 that authorizes the state to structure certain highway construction projects as build finance projects. In this type of build finance model, the contractor, not the state, pays for the cost of construction, likely in the form of lending from a financial institution as work is performed. Payments are then made by the Nebraska Department of Transportation over a period not to exceed 10 years after the project's completion. An amendment was further added to the bill which states that highway construction projects with a payment schedule that exceeds the date of completion would be exempt from paying the contractor interest. This does not, however, include change orders which the DOT would pay for either at the time of work performed or on a deferred schedule if their budget does not allow with interest of 3%. This design finance model is not a traditional public-private partnership like a design build finance agreement. The project is being executed as a traditional design bid build contract with a deferred payment plan. The actual financing of the project is going to be established by the contractor and a financing plan and price will be included in the contractor's bid proposals. The mechanism that this deferred payment schedule will use is called a Deferred Contract Payment Certificate, or DCPC. The payment schedule for the project is a maximum quarterly cash payment of $7.5 million until the project is paid off. During construction, the actual payment to the contractor will be established monthly based on work performed in the previous month. When the $7.5 million cash payment is exhausted before the three-month quarter has elapsed, a deferred contract payment certificate will be issued to the contractor. The contractor will then sell this DCPC, which is essentially a short-term bond, to a financial lender to be able to access the value of the DCPC and continue work. While the DCPCs are not actually bonds, NDOT is determined to ensure that the DCPCs are essentially as good as gold to limit interest costs to the contractor. Repayment of the DCPCs will be prioritized ahead of any future capital expenditures by the DOT. As far as I can tell, the $7.5 million quarterly cash disbursement schedule will be continued for repayment of the DCPCs. This means the $300 million project will take a minimum of seven years to repay after the beltway is substantially complete. Using the deferred payment method, however, will result in millions of dollars being saved due to future material and labor cost increases and the full use of the beltway will be achieved three to four years ahead of a phased construction approach. What remains to be seen, however, is how much money the state will have saved by transferring the funding burden to the contractor. Financing the project will be the sole responsibility of the contractor. To allow as many funding opportunities as possible to the contractors, NDOT is partnered with the Federal Build America Bureau to provide a loan option known as TIFIA, or the Transportation Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act. Now, for anybody interested in the Build America Bureau, which has overseen the TIFIA and Railroad Rehabilitation and Improvement Financing programs since 2016, I recommend watching the video that NDOT posted that explains the two programs. While TIFIA is primarily a loan program for highway construction, both of these programs have been used to fund railway and transit projects, and that presentation gave me a much clearer understanding of what the programs actually are. But regardless, here's a list of the benefits of using a TIFIA loan to finance a portion of this project. 
The main downside to using a TIFI alone is contractor familiarity with the process. In the two pre-bid meetings that NDOT held with contractors, a lot of the questions asked were related to unfamiliarity with the process of applying for and conforming to federal standards necessary to acquire a TIFI alone. Of course, some of the big construction companies bidding on this job will have experience with TIFIA, but it remains to be seen if the winning bidder will use the TIFIA program or opt for an alternative funding strategy. The other main downside to using a TIFIA loan is that the loan can only cover 33% of eligible project costs. NDOT is estimating that the total amount of money that would be available in a TIFI alone to be between 60 and $65 million. Factoring in the total amount of cash available from NDOT during the three years of construction, at least half of the construction budget will have to be borrowed from another source to complete the project. This constitutes a considerable amount of money in fees associated with borrowing approximately $150 million and there is certainly a lot of pressure to get the financial agreement right. Adding to the risk to contractors is the uncertainty of federal interest rates, which will not be finalized until the financial close on March 31st, 2020. So with all the gritty details out of the way about how this project will be built, I hope that you will join me in future videos where I will show you what the greenfield site where the beltway will be built looks like before construction begins, both from the air and the ground. I'm looking forward to following this project throughout the course of construction, and I will be sure to keep you updated as the Beltway gets built. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you all soon.